the time of initiation, we talk about that already. And you should keep quiet. You should not uh, review what you learn to others. Because the verbal instruction alone is nothing. It's a master power that lifts you up, cleanses you, and helps you to improve spiritually further. But you're not allowed to just go out and give initiation by yourself like that. Only when the master sends you, no. tells you. Each time, not just tells you one time and then you can continue to do it your whole lifetime. It's not like that. Because you don't have enough power to help people, lift people up to higher heavens. And to protect them from all dangers on the road. You don't know where to lead them to. Because you yourself don't know the way. Only the master knows it. And when the master assigns you to initiate in the name of the completely enlightened master, and you let the master know their names, then they will be officially initiated and the master will take responsibility. But without the master's permission, you can't do anything. And in no time, empty of master's grace and protection, you and your followers will be all fallen, fallen into the ensnaring clutches of Mara, the devils in hell. Ah, myself, I shudder thinking of that horror. Remember when Milarepa uh, was suffering and really wanted to have initiation and the wife of Mapa, his master, uh, wrote a letter you know, saying that uh, he can be initiated. But the master didn't know about it. So when Milarepa went to be initiated by one of Mapa's representatives, he had nothing, no experience, no light, no sound, nothing. So the disciple representative was very surprised, thinking, or saying to himself or to Milarepa that maybe the Master did not allow this, and that's why it happened. Even in those times, Milarepa was a very powerful magician and also helped his master to take care of many bad uh, people as well. And he could not even get what the master did not want to give him, or what he was not ready for because he was so sinful that his body, his being, could not take in any of the holy power because the mixing of the two opposite energies would have killed him. And not many, rarely, but some of the disciples also say they didn't get anything at initiation. It could be because they were distracted, not listening to the instructions well, or didn't do well what they should do during meditation. They did not concentrate as well. Or maybe that person is not truly uh, sincere to be initiated, not respecting the master, not believing in the master, just coming in for fun or following a girl or following a man to come in for their own, you know, uh, mundane or low purpose. So they will not have the real initiation. I have met uh, at least one of them like that and he complained that some others also don't get an experience. And he himself doesn't have it. Later, I knew why. He wanted money from me. After initiation, he had a chance to see me. And he wanted some money, you know, like 100,000, 200,000, uh, you know, euros. I said I didn't have it. At that time, we had to use all that money to build a new ashram. Ah, I'm telling you. Success or failure, is it all yours? You decide if you want God or if you don't want. If you want God, God is always there for you. Always too happy to be there for you. The Master will always be too happy to be there for you. But if you don't want it, if you're really not sincere in your heart and you just came in for some mundane reason or anything that is not worthy to mention, then you won't get anything. And even some very shallow faith, they got something, maybe a little bit at initiation, but later they will lose it because they do not keep it to themselves. They tell others 
this is taboo. They should not tell any others because both of them will be degraded, will be harmed, will not be uh, blessed and, and protected by heaven after they told or they do things that they should not. Ah, so this is not something you can play with, with your ignorance, arrogance, and insincerity. Now you know. So for any of God's uh, disciples, under my guidance, if you have done all the wrong things that I have mentioned before, you should stop it. Don't just jump in to learn a couple of uh, instructions and then jump out and give people initiation. Then shamelessly boast about yourself as a master or even a great master. You must ask God for forgiveness, for being disrespectful to God Almighty and trying to delude his precious innocent children because your karma is too heavy. You have to keep repenting for the rest of your life, hoping God will forgive you. Master gives protective warning to all interested in Kuan Yin spiritual practice. Because of much abuse of our generosity and leniency by ignorant people and demons hidden in human form, from this day on, the 21st of August 2024, before this and after this day, anyone who fakes Kuan Yin messengers or tries to teach the Kuan Yin method without official permission from Master and confirmation from Central FG must be avoided to protect yourself from being harmed in any way. If you knowingly try the opposite, we are not responsible for any harm done to you or and yours. You may be not accepted if you come to us after for new initiation. This caution must be applied by all contact persons, all meditation centers, all initiates, all future initiates, and all should report to M as soon as possible if such a malign event ever happens again. To be a Buddha, you have to have been practicing for eons and of time already, and God has to allow it. And the universes have to accept you. They have to know. Nothing you can cheat in the universe. It's all transparent. Everybody knows you. Everybody sees your spiritual level and development. Not because you study 30, 40 years sitting there or listening to somebody else's instructions, but not doing much. Not because you're a virgin, not because you're a vegan even. The Buddha is the Buddha. It's not because you're doing all this outer kind of appearance or outer practice or thinking that you <laughs> have reached something. No, it's not the thing for you to play with. The karma is too heavy. So stop all this nonsense. Repent. Ask God for forgiveness and humbly continue to practice what your master taught you. Otherwise, this karma is too heavy because you're not what you are and you pretend to be or you wish to claim the position Oh, that is the worst karma you can have, according to the Buddhist sutra, according to what the Buddha say, because you have not reached Buddhahood. You have not reached complete enlightenment, and you proclaim that you have. Oh, that's the worst kind of sin. The Buddha say you will go to the relentless hell. So watch it, huh? Be careful. Take care of your own spiritual merit and practice. Be humble. Be diligent. Ask God for forgiveness. Maybe you will be able to evade hell, relentless hell even, not a normal hell, like forever hell. As I said already, you, you can't be a Buddha just because you're a virgin. You can't be a Buddha just because you're a monk or a nun or eat a very little every day or walk instead of going by bus, barefoot instead of having shoes. In those times, because it was very difficult for the monks to have access to comfort, so they had as little as possible. And they didn't have money, so they couldn't just buy shoes. But if people bought shoes for them, they would wear them. I'm sure the Buddha would have allowed that. 
It's just that if you're a monk, you know, even if you're in the company of the Buddha, there are many, many, too many thousands of monks. People just can't provide enough. In those days, you just walk on the village path and it was only like red dirt. It wouldn't hurt your, your feet anyway, yes. Not because you eat only once a day, not because you harass yourself, your own body, by exposing it to all kinds of weather and don't give yourself the comfort of lying down for a while. Even the Buddha lay down, reclined sometimes, openly, officially. It's not because of all these outer reasons that you become a Buddha. Devadatta, he restricted himself. He reinforced more ascetic discipline than the Buddha allowed for himself or his own monastic disciples. But he was not a Buddha. It's obvious that he was so aggressive. He was so murderous even. He wanted to kill the Buddha who was harmless to him and even helped to heal Devadatta many times when he was sick or had some trouble. Even after Devadatta already betrayed him, left and uh, formed his own group and made himself look more disciplined than the Buddha, more ascetic, anything. It's, it's all garbage. It's only the outer appearance. If you're Buddha, it's because you are Buddha. Hmm? You eat one meal or you eat three meals, you're still a Buddha. So no need to show off any cheap theatrical performance to attract people to worship you. You just attract more bad karma because you're lying. You're deluding yourself and deluding heavens and God even. How dare you do that? Huh? God knows everything. Your master knows your level also. If you come and ask, or write and ask, 